All right, I'm set up here in Point Reyes, and there is a hippie down in the street over there, street preaching. So I don't know if you'll be able to hear him, <laughs> but if so, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Uh, it has been over a year since my last video. I came into 2022 expecting to do like a lot of video content, but it just didn't happen. But it's right at the end of the year and I figured, you know what, let's get at least one out this year. So here I am today in Point Reyes Station. I'm gonna be meeting up with my friend Steven and we are gonna hit the coast today and I'm gonna be shooting and talking about what it's like being a adventure photographer with a Leica Q2. This is a brand new camera for me. I've only had it for uh, a little over a week. So this is actually my first shoot with this camera. I've never taken it out. Uh, I've only shot with it in my backyard. So I'm real excited to explore today and see what it's like shooting with this camera. I'm not gonna get into the specs or any of that information about this camera because you can watch a hundred videos on that. I'm a Sony shooter. I have the Sony a7R5. Been with Sony a long time. All of my glass is Sony GM. So I have like a very stellar Sony kit, but I've always had my eye on having a Leica because of the Leica look. But um, this, this hippie down here is driving me crazy. Can't focus. Here's my man back there. Can you see him? Maybe you can hear him, who knows. I hope you can hear him. Okay, back to the Leica. What I'd like to find out today is how this Leica will fit into the style that I shoot. Style of photography has like three major categories. Like what you shoot is part of your style. If you shoot food, if you shoot architecture, if you shoot landscapes, portraits, whatever. The second thing that contributes to your style is how you compose the thing that you shoot. You can compose a lot of different ways. So how you compose is your style. And the third thing is how you expose your shoot. So how you use the exposure triangle of aperture, ISO, and shutter to create your exposures. For instance, if you shoot with a low aperture and a high shutter speed and a low ISO, you have one type of look. But if you shoot with a very high aperture and a low ISO and a low shutter, you have a different look. And so those things all play into style. So for me, I compose the way I compose. I shoot the things that I shoot, but how I expose on the Sony system is typically using the histogram and exposing to the right. I do that so that the shadows are nice and clear and bright. I know a lot of Sony shooters tend to underexpose and recover those shadows, but the fourth thing that I didn't talk about that contributes to your style is how you edit. I like more of a film look when I edit, therefore I don't want that HDR cranked up shadows, buried highlights kind of look. I like my shadows to be true to how I expose and so I typically expose for my shadows more than my highlights but what that can do is blow the highlights out so like your sky becomes all white instead of blue and things like that. So typically oh, there is literally a Mercedes driving through this barn. Can they do that? I don't think they can do that. With exposure to the right, what I typically do is push the histogram all the way to the right until it hits the wall, which is going to overexpose the image. And then I start to back it off slowly until it's no longer touching the wall and it's as high as I can get it. Now on the Sony system, that typically translates to like a plus one or so. But here's the thing, the highlights are still there. I can bring those highlights down to my heart's content while retaining the shadows. And so that creates that more film inspired look that I like. So what I wanna to try to accomplish today is shooting with the Q2. Can I expose this the exact same way and get the same results? Because the Leica sensor is gonna be a different experience than what I'm used to with the Sony sensor. Um, and even shooting raw is gonna give me a different experience altogether. So today I'm gonna to take the Leica out and shoot by exposing to the right, retaining my style with the way that I edit and the way that I shoot. So we're gonna find out today, so here we go. All right, so I just met up with my friend Steven. This is Steven. Hey, what's up, man? Today, beautiful How are you day, doing? Buddy. Happy Flexmas season, Flexmas season. What's, what's your name? Flynn Austin Nick Q, right here with everyone in points all the way to love and light, celebrating the game of life, play perfectly backwards and forwards in anniversary 12, 21, 2019. We're here at Crown Shaka. Waka, waka, waka. Heck Good yeah. to see you. Oh, yeah, Flex and Woo! What a happy season to everyone. Great to see you. <laughs> hey, man, for sure. You well done. <laughs> and there we go. All right, we're getting all set up here to head out and do a little shooting here at the Point Reyes Lighthouse. So I'm um, taking the Q2, we're gonna get some shots and see how it all looks. 
Steven's out here shooting with the X-T2. Got the, uh, the Cinebloom. No need to upgrade, folks. No need to upgrade. <laughs> That's right. Here I am, constantly upgrading. And this dude's out here with the X-T2 like a champ, like a pro. I think one of the more fun things about shooting with this Leica Q2 is that it doesn't have a lot of features and a lot of options. So basically I have the big three, aperture, shutter, and ISO, that's it. And if it, I mean, the camera does more stuff than that, but why do I want more? I mean, that's all you need if you're shooting with a system like this. starting to think it's almost inevitable to go anywhere and just not have, <laughs> not have something crazy. Whether it's a <laughs> out hippie or someone's car alarm going off while we're at this beautiful beach overlook, trying to just enjoy the afternoon. Just never, <laughs> never misses. There's always something or somebody <laughs> just being so, loud it's like those people you ever been on a trail and someone's walking with a bluetooth speaker yes. it's like god man <laughs> it's the worst this is my bluetooth speaker today this guy with the car one thing that i have found that's already helpful is because i shoot um or because i expose to the right you know i want to get that histogram as far to the right as possible and because the leica q2 is very much like manual dials and everything it doesn't have a lot of like the half stops um that or you know one third stops or whatever like like sony or canon or any of those brands are gonna have so because of that it's uh kind of hard to expose to the right when you're stopping between 1500 or 500 and 250. this dial on the right for exposure compensation is kind of saving the day because i'm able to to do these small steps rather than just the big steps that are on the dial so I think if I was making a tip list um, for the way I shoot is I think this exposure compensation is gonna be pretty important for me. Whereas on my other cameras, I never use exposure compensation. So I think it's gonna be important though on the way that I shoot this Leica. shoot this boathouse down here and they've got part of the um, the waterfront closed because it's elephant seal season in California so maybe we'll see a few elephant seals and that brings me to uh, one of the downsides of the Leica Q2 is that everything is wide 28 millimeter so you're not gonna get any uh, anything close up but it's not a wildlife camera, so it's all going good. All right, so Steven and I are uh, in Point Reyes here at this boathouse and uh, some elephant seals down here. That's a big dude. Steven thought he was dead. He wasn't even moving I around. I thought he was dead, but I'm glad he's alive. <laughs> he's sleeping hard. All right, here at the Cypress Tree Tunnel, continuing to grab some shots in the Q2. One thing I'm noticing is that when I expose to the right, things look really blown out. Like more blown out than like you would normally see. 
And I'm wondering if the light meter and the histogram on here are actually accurate because I've been shooting like ETTR, exposing to the right, or shooting close to zero. But now that we've gotten here, I feel like that things just don't look right, even though I'm shooting to the right. So I'm, I'm curious to see, and we're gonna do an evaluation when I get back, if I should underexpose like I would, like I said in the beginning, like how m most people shoot with Sony or Canon even, like should I be underexposing because the light meter and the histogram aren't necessarily telling me the truth. Curious to know that. And we're gonna find out here in a little bit when we get back to my computer. Okay, so now I've got the files off of the Leica and into Lightroom. I think my suspicions were mostly confirmed that shooting ETTR on the Leica tended to overexpose everything. But the good news is that the Leica has a ton of dynamic range. And so while things were pretty overexposed or some of the photos were pretty overexposed, most of them actually were either like okay or recoverable. But all that said, I think going forward, I will probably expose maybe a little under when I'm shooting on Leica or try the new highlight exposure that they, they built into firmware for. And again, I just wanna say I've had this camera for a week. But I wanna show you guys uh, a few of the photos I, I picked from this shoot today just to give you an idea of the dynamic range as well as like what it looks like um, to shoot ETTR on the Leica. And of course, this is all very, very subjective and you may look at these photos and think they are overexposed, underexposed, perfectly exposed or whatever. For me, some of these are a little hot, at least compared to the Sony system I normally shoot on. But let's take a look. We're gonna dive right into this first one here. And so um, you saw me in the video earlier in this quick scene of the trail. And so, uh, yeah. I mean, if you look here at the histogram, you'll see up here that it's definitely hitting the wall. But if I was to pull those highlights down, they actually have plenty of room to come back, which is awesome. I mean, and, and again, like any modern system can do this, whether it's Sony or Nikon, but they don't have the Leica look. So uh, so this one, you can kind of see, um, you know, how, how much contrast uh, is in the photo, as well as how much dynamic range is in this photo. And I'm pretty happy with the way the shadows exposed on this one. You know, if we were to pixel peep and my focal point, I think was further up here, but you know, you can see that you definitely have like a lot of contrast. I think, I think the Leica look is like a lot of contrast in the colors. And so like, you definitely see the blacks are very deep, but we're still pretty clear in this photo, even though it definitely um, has hit the wall on the exposure composition. If, if I was to make this look more like my Sony system, I think it would probably be around like maybe half. Yeah, I would say it'd probably be around, around like you know, half a stop down. And so um, you can definitely see this is the sun. So that's blown out because of that reason. There's also a lot of ability to recover shadows on this camera. So that's been really cool as well as I've started messing around with some of the edits. Uh, okay, let's look at another one. As I was walking just along the coast, I just like this, I like this tree branch. I don't know, it was just really cool. And, and we were shooting in pretty horrible California conditions. It was an overcast day and it's super hazy right now here in the entire Bay in Northern California area. And so it wasn't great lighting anywhere, but that wasn't the point of this shoot. So irrelevant. But if you look here, you know, you can definitely see there's still quite a bit of detail in the shadows because, you know, I exposed for the shadows. And so if we look at this though, you, you get an idea. I mean, this is a pretty good exposure. It's uh, exposed to the right. So you see most of the data is on the right side here and it looks good. Um, it's definitely room to, to bring the sky back and bring it down if you were going for that kind of look. Look at this one here. This one again, shot ETTR. Uh, you can see it's exposed a little to the right. Um, you can see how hazy and overcast all of this is and looks, you know, the, the lighting was just really rough. And you can, again, you can see how much, you know, highlight recovery we can do here. One thing I'll say that I noticed comparing this one, I took a couple of shots of this, this exact same photo um, with my Sony. And the thing that I noticed was that comparing like a Sony system, and I imagine Canon is the same. Imagine there's like a, 
a hundred points in between the highlights and the lowlights, right? So like you have all of this gradient in between. So as you roll your shadows up or pull your highlights down, they're so smooth and buttery on those systems. Like where the highlights or the shadows end and begin is just a nice, beautiful roll off. I'm finding on the Leica that that roll off, if there's a hundred on Sony or whatever, let's say there's 60 on the Leica, right? So there's like less roll off in between the shadows and the highlights. And so as I would bring the shadows up and down on my Sony files compared to the Leica files, I would get more roll off in between what was a shadow and what wasn't versus here. And so I think that just, again, I think that plays into Leica's look though. Like you have a lot of deep blacks and really contrasting colors. And I think that whenever you start to manipulate highlights and shadows, they still kind of stay where they are. They don't like smooth out into other parts of your photos. And so, and again, like that, I would say that would might, that might be a feature, not a criticism. Um, let's look at another one. So this was a boathouse and there was an elephant seal on the beach, which was a pretty cool moment to see. The beach here is closed and the trail down to the boathouse and dock is closed because the elephant seals have access this, this time of year. But we were up on this high ledge here and, and you can see like the sky. And again, if you look at the histogram, the, it's all exposed to the right. Good shadow retention. You might be able to see this other seal hanging out under the dock. I wasn't too uh, too unhappy with with this picture. I, you know, I wish the lighting was better and everything, but that wasn't the point of this. And so I think on my Sony, my exposure would have probably been a little lower. Like when I when I expose to the right, I don't mean like all the way to the right, you know? So again, I'm finding that the Leica is exposing maybe about half of a stop more if you're a Sony shooter than maybe you would be used to on Sony. And so as I pull down the exposure in Lightroom, like half a stop, it starts to actually look more like it would when I'm shooting with my Sony. Okay, let's go to this last one here. It's my buddy Steven in the Cypress tree tunnel. This was a much darker uh, moment as we were shooting because this is a very shaded area. It's super overcast. I think I shot this at, let's see, yeah, 1, 1 uh, So if you were to compare that to these other ones, like this one, you're gonna see I shot these at like one one thousandth. And so I was at 125th here. So much, uh, you know, a slower shutter, but not a problem with it. Let's look at the histogram. You'll see on this one, just with all the whites of the sky is like, you know, has the whites here on the right. But most of the information is on the left side here. I actually shot this one a bit underexposed. Um, because as I was shooting here at the Cypress Tree Tunnel, the it, it, and I know you don't really ever trust the LCD on the camera, but the LCD was looking really bad. It was looking really blown out. And so I just took it down to like negative one and shot. And I, honestly, I think it turned out better. So like, I think moving forward, this photo really represents what maybe I would be going for with exposure from here on out. So next time I take this Leica out to shoot, I'm probably not gonna shoot to the right or shoot even at zero. I might try to underexpose a little bit. The only thing that might change that, and again, this is kind of yet to be determined, is the new highlight metering mode that is in the Leica 4.0 firmware. And so uh, I've seen some people in the Facebook groups recommend that. May try that, but honestly, like, I don't wanna think about stuff that much. <laughs> so I just wanna keep it in multi and just exposure triangle and just do my thing. I'm gonna be posting, maybe when I get around to editing these, I might post a couple on my Instagram. So be sure to give me a follow on there. I'm hoping in 2023 to continue to ramp up these videos and talk more about gear, talk more about travel and photography, uh, and just, you know, not, not to try to say something that's been done a hundred times, but just maybe a few different ideas, maybe my take on things, or also if I see a shortcoming. The reason I'm making this video is because I could not find anybody on YouTube talking about the exposure with the Leica. And so I was curious as how does it compare? So overall thoughts, if you are a Sony shooter, and I imagine this is true with Canon as well, you might find that the Leica tends to expose a little hotter, a little brighter than the system you might be used to shooting on. But that's not a big deal because you can just learn how to shoot on the Leica and begin to shoot on it. And that's what I plan to do and I'm stoked to do. And honestly, I'll just be straight up with you. I felt really inspired walking around with this camera. Even though I had my 
Sony equipment in my backpack, I, it really didn't come out very much because there was something simple about this that was slower and it was also a little more intentional like i couldn't just like run and gun and change settings on the fly real fast and and maybe i'll get faster with it but i don't know if i want to like i enjoyed the slow pace of shooting on this leica there was definitely something inspirational about shooting on it compared to any time i've shot with my sony in recent in recent memory and so i hope you find this video helpful uh if you did be sure to subscribe more content will be coming hopefully more than one video a year uh i hope to ramp these up you can also follow my blog i write two to three times a week at my website it's in the description below dave.online super easy to find me and again hit me up on social and drop a comment and let me know if you especially if you're a like a q2 shooter i would be so curious to hear what your experience has been go out get creative have fun and thanks for watching today